Welcome everyone, Kostin here with a discussion about the Changeling and Total War, Warhammer 3, Immortal Empires with the Shadows of Change DLC. I've already talked about his overall campaign, but I do want to go over the various schemes that he has, the grand scheme, and ultimately leading to the ultimate scheme. The ultimate scheme will involve a battle between yourself and potentially all of these allies against the forces of Bretonia, Teclas, Cafe, Kislev, the Empire, and the Dwarves. It is actually going to be te uh, Teclas, Luan Leoncor, uh, a random cafe in general. Okay, so in order to get the ultimate scheme completed, you need to complete five grand schemes. Now, there are several areas of the campaign map, theaters of war, that where you can complete schemes. I think pretty much every major area of the campaign map with the exception of the Chaos Wastes. So let's take a look at what is available. Now you'll always start in the Empire. So first things first, in, the, in your campaign you are going to want to do the grand scheme of the Empire. Here's what uh, here's what this requires. It requires each grand scheme requires you to do free regular schemes, and these can give you significant benefits. Now, in the, the campaign as the Changeling and Mortal Empires, you will do one scheme very very quickly because you will be able to build a trickster cult very quickly. So that just means you have to do two. Another one is also pretty easy to sack Altdorf by constructing a ravaging host. So basically you just build a cult here with an agent with the special agent agent you'll get. You build the structure, um, right. specifically this structure and that will allow you to do it. And that leaves the third. I strongly recommend going for Festus because that gives you 10% casualty replenishment. As by the way, speaking about casualty replenishment, you have a good army in Otter's Resolve, but by default, Siege doesn't have good casualty replenishment, but the Changeling does have ways of improving that. So you can get 10% uh, in one turn, the first thing you research is 10% casualty replenishment, then you get 5% additional casualty replenishment, and then you get Scatter uh, Losi, so that's, you're looking at 20% casualty replenishment, by default, and then you add 10% more from defeating Festus, you're looking at 30% uh, casualty replenishment that you'll get, which means that you can just basically out resolve your way through the campaign for the vast, for a lot of battles. And this is great because it means the battles you're fighting will generally be the more meaningful ones, like things like legendary lords to deal with. There are some difficult objectives over here. I'm not sure if this is only available in this particular theater, but it does require you to win 12 battles against the dwarves. That is pretty brutal. There's other things as well. Now, when you do free grants, uh, free, uh, uh, free schemes, you will get the uh, the great scheme, the grand scheme over here in the empire. So what the empire will do is that the empire will be unable to reinforce your enemies in the ultimate scheme. The Empire Electro Counts will descend into Civil War, and you'll get the form of a called Hellbrass, as well as the Ruined Blade, which is a pretty good weapon. And then you'll get 50 Cult Supplies per turn. F cult Supplies are used to construct every building okay. in your campaign one way or another, so getting 50 per turn is actually quite a significant benefit to your Empire building. Because you are building an Empire, even if it's an Empire of Cults, you are still building an Empire. And you also get a trickster rift. What the rift does is it allows you to open a portal in a particular area. So over here, for instance, I can open a portal in the empire if I get that particular resource. So you need to do schemes to get these rifts, do objectives, get these rifts. So I can open one in virtually every single area of the campaign map. Actually, there's more that you can open because there's a scheme here that if you get 75% uh, cast corruption, siege corruption in Sylvania, you will get a portal here. So you would actually get two portals in the Empire. So for instance, one would be here on the western side, uh, northwestern side of the Empire, another one on the southeastern side of the Empire. And when uh, you've done the free regular schemes, you will get a bell. So for instance, over here, This is the battle against the Empire. Isn't necessarily 
uh, too difficult of a battle. So that's the empire. Then let's look at the others in order. You've got the Badlands and the Southlands. So you've got this entire theater of operations. Uh, basically, all the way from... Um, all the way from Kairos to um, uh, all the way from Kairos to um, to Camry in the balance. Actually, even higher than that. So you've got this entire section of the map. Now the objectives here, of course, will vary. Like get the form of, of Scarbrand. Um, get uh, get sandwalker so take so raise or sack the following settlements for 10 percent upkeep all that kind of good stuff get 10 percent more casualty replenishment if you so desire they do need to win 12 battles against the tomb kings so um the grand scheme in the badlands and the southlands will result in like all of these schemes will result in a battle that you do need to fight and what this will do is is what will give you a unique ritual will be performed at the Black Pyramid of Nagash. Tomb King allies will support you in the ultimate scheme. You'll get Tome of the Undead, so melee attack against undead factions, weapons, strength, and immune to psychology, and a trickster rift, an extra trickster rift. In Bretonia and Athaloran, if we take a look at the situation in Bretonia, Bretonia will will be unable to reinforce your enemies in the ultimate scheme. The Red Duke will besiege all of Bretonia with his undead legions. This is an end time um, callback, end times callback, because the Red Duke, well, not the Red Duke, the bastard son of Lewin Leoncourt basically waged a civil war in Bretonia, but it's like they're using the Red Duke for that particular purpose. So he'll uh, create a massive rebellion of undead against Bretonia. Um, you'll obtain the form of the Green Knight, if you do not already have it, and you'll get 100 diplomatic relations with vampire counts and one trickster rift. In Darklands and the Mountains of Morn, you will get Greenskin allies that will support you in the ultimate scheme. Greenskin laborers will rise in, up in rebellion against overseers. You'll get the form of Gordus Backstabber and a trickster rift, as well as 50 more cult supplies. This is also a callback to the end times because that's pretty much what happened. Grimgor invaded the Darklands, but also the laborers rose up against the uh, Chaos Dwarves. And Gorduz, in particular, played a critical role in toppling Zarnagrund because he betrayed the Chaos Dwarves at the critical moment. Funny thing about Gorduz there. Now, in Grand Café... Grand Cafe will be unable to reinforce your enemies in the ultimate scheme. The Kurgan Warband will breach the Great Bastion, enabling Xenshian rebels to swarm the theater. You will get the Trickster Rift and Abundant Magic. So when's the magic cost minus 10% for all spells, all armies. Though, of course, when you're deciding what you're going to go for, you always should consider like the other benefits. It's not just like the scheme benefit, but uh, the grand scheme benefit, but also the other benefits as well. Like, what are those kind of benefits? What will they give you? So you can get some items over here. You can get 10% income from parasitic buildings. Very More items, more and more items. I think Cafe... Well, Cafe is both really worth it and also not necessarily so. Because having to go deal with Akai, yes, he, is, he would give you an enormous benefit. 20% barrier and 10 armor, that is ridiculously strong. But having to go deal with him, that would be pretty, diffi uh, pretty long. Then you go into Lustria. In, in Lustria, you would get Skaven allies to support you in the ultimate scheme. Clan Peston will unleash a great plague upon the Lizardmen of Lustria. Like, all of these are callbacks to the end times. And basically, like, what, what the Changeling is doing is, like, he's reenacting the end times. Forget the Archeon. The Changeling is the true bringer of the end times. Um... So, Clan Pestilon unleash a great plague upon the Lizardmen of Lestria. All of them at the same time. That would be pretty br brutal. You'd get the form of Lord Croak. Jeez. That is... That is absurd. You get his abilities as well, if I'm not mistaken. You get Diplomatic Relations Skaven and immune to, immune to Plague Attrition over here. As well as, of course, other benefits. Global Recruitment Capacity, Local Recruitment Capacity, 
25% come from stacking settlements. But fun fact, you can't stack settlements, so what's the point there? Um, then you get Nagrond, or Nagaroth, over here. You ally the Vampire Coast. So Vampire Coast allies will support you in the ultimate scheme. A huge rebellion of Blowtail Corpses will attack all the ports of Nagaroth. Okay. And you get the Captain's Horn, which gives you a unit of Bloated Corpses. Then you get base weapon damage. And various items. Armor piercing damage. Green skin rebels, okay. And you obtain the form you can obtain the form of Malekith. Then you've got Norska and Kislev. You get Norskan allies in the final battle. Norskans will form a warband to invade either Wolfwan or Grand Cafe at your choice. Um, regiments round the Cold Voider, Frostworm, Trickster, uh, uh, Trickster Rift, and Recruitment Benefits. Then you can also obtain Deadly Equipment. That is pretty strong. So if you win 12 battles, it's the thing about winning the battle objectives, it's not, it, sieges don't count. Or actually, they, I guess they do count, but you also have certain specific ob objectives like the target practice, which gives you, f you, which requires you to win 15 land battles in the Empire Theater. And that can be pretty annoying. So you can get recruitment of Rune. I'm not sure what this has to do with, like, Kislev seems to be fairly limited, um, though you can get the form of Gotrich, who is also a pretty strong duelist. And I've already covered the Empire, and then we've got Ulfwan. In Ulfwan, the high, elf, high Elves will be unable to reinforce your enemies in the Ultimate Scheme. So I imagine in the Ultimate Scheme, like, you're always going to have to face the Empire based on what we're seeing here, but these are just the reinforcements that will become available over here. And actually, looking at um, looking at the situation, I guess we're also going to always have to face Kislev um, based on what we're seeing over here. Okay. So Kislev and the Empire Catherine and Carl Franz. You're going to be dealing with them. But you, I guess you can eliminate Teclis, or at least some of his support. I, I think it's more likely that you eliminate some form of support, but you're always going to have to deal with the same legendary lords. Um, so in Wolfwan, the Cult of Pleasure will be unleashed across all of Wolfwan. So you're really helping Morafi in this one. <laughs> um, you obtain the form of the Blue Scribes, if you don't already have it, and available Trickster Rifts. And you get 100 Grimoires per turn. Now, looking at the situation over here in Wolfwan, I, when I look at the situation, I kind of have to argue that it's not really worth it, with one major exception, of course, and that's the Sword of Cain. But yeah, some are worth it more uh, than others. Obviously, the Empire is, of course, worth it, because you do start there, you do get that casualty replenishment uh, from that perspective and immunity to vampiric Cor uh, corruption so like doing the empire is of course worth it uh, in terms of the badlands you get the chain sword you get uh, sand walkers so that so you could consider that worth it uh, you do need to go after certain specific salmons make an alliance with scarbrand win battles against the tomb kings and also potentially get kairos i'm not sure if you can confederate kairos uh, that would be an interesting question uh, bretonia so, if you look at Bretonia, you do get armor, you do get melee attack with Bretonia. I, get, I, I do think, like, Bretonia could be worth it, uh, largely because of the uh, diplomatic benefit with the vampire counts. And one of the ways, like, what I would say about these schemes is you probably should view it on a theater level, right? Like, you might want, like, you might fight Vlad initially, but you might also want to just make an alliance with him to help him out to wipe out the Empire, because you can really shift the balance of power one way or another. In fact, Vlad is look, looking like he is going to win the situation over here in the Empire. He's, he's certainly achieving success, greater level of success over here than you might have expected. I'm actually surprised. So he is throwing free armies right here, um, right here. 
Dark Lands, I would certainly argue getting allies in the final battle can uh, be worth it. Grand Cafe, maybe not quite as much for Grand Cafe. Uh, Lustria, could be nice, especially to just troll with Lord Croak without playing Lord Croak and the diplomatic benefit they can get with uh, Skaven. Now Groth seems that it's not necessarily so worth it and does conflict with Wolf One because you do have to basically wipe out Marathi uh, and like all the major Dark Elven factions here, but then you go at Wolf One and it's like you just unleash the Cult of Pleasure. So um, you do when you're choosing what you're going to do, think about like, okay, what scheme am I doing now? What scheme am I going to do in the future? Now, how do you get from one part of the map to another? Because you're not going to walk there. That's the thing. You open a rift in one area, and then you open a rift to another, and then you it takes one turn once you enter a rift, but you use the rifts for teleportation. Another thing that you can do, like once you finish a theater, here's what you will, hap will happen. You'll get an event where you get to decide where a bunch of trickster agents get a position. So these agents can set up uh, can set up trickster cult. So this is how you steamroll as the changeling. You deal like the early game is really slow, and it's like it's turn twenty five. Like I haven't really accomplished all that much. Like I've been walking around. I lost an entire army in point of fact because ogre showed up when I didn't expect them. But like once you get going as the changeling, you get going because like you start building a massive amount of trickster cult. So that's income. Then you get then you finish a theater, and after you finish a theater a bunch of agents spawn and you can send them like the the immediate one of the events that you get right after finishing the empire is you can send free agents in the darklands and that means you can put a cult right under zarna grund and take a significant amount of income from zarna grund as a result of that those are um that is how you you paint the map in your colors it is certainly a very interesting campaign uh, though I will certainly agree that it is a bit boring. Like it's a very narrative focused campaign. Like I would argue, it's uh, it's probably the first real narrative campaign that we've had in a very very long time, and it's stealth campaign, the first re the first real stealth campaign in Total War history. But I, I think it's a lot of fun because of the various choices. Like I consider those choices, like the schemes, the decisions you have here, like narrative choices, basically. So I think it presents an interesting system. Like it's a it's a very objective based campaign. I guess you could argue. And it's not necessarily going to benefit. It, it Obviously, it still is a sandbox campaign, but I think like it does push you into certain directions towards objective. And I think there are certainly things in this campaign that Creative Assembly should take and implement in future Total War games because there's a lot to like about the Changeling from my point of view. The overall situation with Shadows of Change, that's a completely different discussion, but the Changeling, I think, is is pretty fun to play. Cosine signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.